Hello everyone. Today's talk is titled How to Work with God Consciousness and I'm very quickly going to talk about how we should approach that idea. God Consciousness is suggesting to a state of awareness where you're collectively aware of simultaneous experience. So you're, you're aware of your neighbor to the degree that you're, you're aware of because of his experience. So what that means is man is an individual experience, he's becoming a collective experience, therefore compassion is the nature of things, love is the nature of things. And so reality works in such a way. Now, to see where God consciousness leads, it means to take the individual from its lack of trust, which is keeping it an individual, and to showing it that it was always part of a collective cosmic body. And this body of intelligence was beyond its own conception. So what that means is that there are certain things affecting man's intelligence that are beyond conception. And so imagination should not just be called imagination, and we should become aware to degrees where it is more than our measurements. As you do so, you will see that man has only understood his intelligence in a certain way. Like the normal person, the average human being, is understanding his intelligence in a, in a certain way. There are certain ways you can embrace not just nature, but the nature of your being in a manner where your ability is simply your expression. It's like you know how to walk because you're walking. You know how to exist because you're existing. So there's an aspect of you that knows how to be here and that's why you're here. So be grateful for that and see that it's profound. Now begin to see how much you want your intelligence to completely be in a world where you are the only life and everything is empty. <clears throat> or would you rather be in a world where uh, you are self-aware within a greater self-awareness? So what that means is similar to how we are aware of our body there is a greater sense of experiential knowing that is aware of our experience. So when you begin to see that in yoga and meditation long ago, the, the mystics talked about, the yogis talked about bhakti, the yoga of devotion, you would see that it was not, the point was not worshipping some god. The point was to see that the experience of God was the complete experience of all things. And so a man who understood God began to realize that he no longer needed to just be his individual idea, that his trust in life, his trust in God, his sincerity in his knowing would be the clarity of an honest and well-lived life. It's very interesting because the whole point of religion is that man is being so ambitious to think what he should do for death. So it's a preparation for death because we're you're in a point where individuality is kept through preparation. However, we want to acknowledge ourselves more than who we are. And so this is where Mr. Within finds it peaceful to work without names. When you are naming yourself, you are sucked into portals of battles of beliefs between you and other. It's not about who believes what or what's true in the manner of belief. It's simply about how much is there an existential clarity and how intense is the ability. So what that means is I would not judge truth uh, other than something that is giving man ability. Truth was always in ability, not in incapability. Because what was incapable wasn't enough, wasn't your truth. So what that means, if, if this holy book said something better than that holy book, you'd prefer that holy book. Or if this science text was said something better than this science text, you'd prefer that. Do you see, man must shift his intelligence, and his social intelligence must be shifted by the creativity that is within the individual, which is from a collective inspiration. Man, in understanding his nature of being, is recognizing that he is existence. He does not exist. What that means is your awareness, the essence of your awareness and your honesty and sincerity to know who you are. Once those gates are open, you begin seeing that you are being such an honest and simple man that your life cannot lie to you. The illusion cannot remain. You're, you're so honest that life is showing you what it has to every moment. You see this, it is a conscious relationship that you build with yourself. Guilt is also a conscious relationship you build with yourself, but guilt is for the character in the story. You're more than the character. As long as you think you're a certain somebody, that somebody can die, that somebody can get hurt, that somebody can get trapped, that somebody can get lost. And so it is your awareness that needs to become the greater clarity that is your initiation into your greater understanding. Self-initiation is very important now. We must know ourselves through many views. Now, how God consciousness may apply in suggesting and showing you the brighter 
horizon, people began saying that if you were to meditate or take the concept of God consciousness or whatever you see as the highest state of man's experience, and you were to meditate it, you would begin saying that you have an ability to take that relationship and see it within all other moments of your life. You can see it manifest and that's the ability of your mind. When the bo- when you as an individual realize suddenly you are within your collective, when the body realizes that it's a mind who is experiencing a body or that is experiencing a body, the ability shifts and your reality shifts. And based on that shift, you will find yourself being present in worlds of your own greater order. So right now, the way you have values and feelings about even, let's say, my talk right now, that is a certain order, a certain design of how man thinks, right, how you're thinking. But again, you will see tomorrow you will suddenly be in a different state, in a different state. And so what I'm simply suggesting is that as you become aware of the shift in your state of awareness, you will immediately gain a a rhythm of self-intelligence. You will follow, you will be found in a flow of trust. And so as you trust the signs, you will begin seeing that that sense of God consciousness was always within you. God was always giving you signs. Your trust in life will take your experience to the absolute. And so unification and symbology are the producers of the veil of man's illusion. But as you become aware, you are moving beyond. Observance is beyond. Trust that you trust. And so you will see that your movement always knows. <coughs> and again, as playfully as I said, if a, if a drop fell from a leaf into a river, that drop is immersed in the knowing and intelligence of the river and it will be guided to where it wants. Do you see this? So before we even uh, tap into playfully playing with imagery of extraterrestrials in our consciousness, uh, we need to first be aware of where our consciousness is. And through the platform of the present moment, man can study his plane of existence to see that God is within all things and the same eye, the same, and as, as Meister Eckhart has said, the same eye that he sees God is the same eye God sees him. This is suggested. It's profound. It's an understanding that your perception is creating the value. And where is it creating and where is the sensory reality placed? And so once you seek the placeless, there's never a seeker. And so direct experience is your guide. You are within God, and God is within you. Your devotion and trust in life is why you're here. Your ability to be aware of your existence is your presence. And as you know, you shall receive, because <laughs> you have always received. Uh, I want to suggest to many advanced communicators that are remembering themselves. It's very important that if you are getting flows of ideology and cognition, just new understandings every day, it's as if your hobby in life has just become get d- deep understanding truth more deeply and more deeply, you will begin to see that uh, it would be a good idea to begin writing and not that you should have an idea. Don't have an agenda in your writing or try to write for anyone or anything. Just get a piece of paper and as you go through deep self contemplative thought, let the writing be written and just take a pen and write. And you will see that you have a total ability to <coughs> increase your ability and intelligence. So what that means is some people call it spirits and gods and they give it an external image of something giving them an ability and others just enhance the human ability and see no you have a self-intelligent soul so it, it, it's the same the symbol doesn't matter you don't need to talk about god and so well, this is why silence has been a great source of wisdom in a world where the noise did not mean anything. <clears throat> so i recommend writing and as you write have this mentality per se. This is a mentality that also Mr. Within would recommend for writing. Irrelevant to what I just said. Uh, you, you can think of it this way. If you were to write 
a, make a huge portfolio of everything you knew and you were to leave this behind for let's say your kid to just give him a library of who you were right and at the same time uh, regardless if your kid gave it to the world or not it would be his choice you would see that in establishing such a library it's as if you take in view that everything you write is important and significant to be kept to be a reference for mankind and to guide the symbol into its transcendent view in other words the edge of the symbol will be recognized by the being that trusts uh, the eternity beyond any apocalypse be your own clarity and orient yourself not in space and time but as the observance of space and time and so the observer is never touched by the object of observance I hope you have received what you needed to from this talk and at the same time I want to say that the advanced communicators will astonish themselves, not anyone else, of how much their ability is. Once you see ability has no audience, you will be in your greatest ability in an instant of your own. Much blessings and namaste.